So you're looking at the absolute number of deaths by decade for people aged 25 to 35, all the way up to 85 and up. And we basically break accidental deaths into four categories. So overdoses, transportation accidents, which are mostly car accidents, falls, and everything else. As you can see, those first three, accidental overdose, transport deaths, and falls represent virtually all accidental deaths. So you can almost ignore everything else. This is the absolute numbers. These are total numbers. And I think kind of two things stand out here um, really clearly. The first is that for people, you know, younger than 60, uh, overdoses are the predominant cause of accidental death. And for people over 65, falling is. But if you go to the next figure, it tells, I think, a more important story, which is when you adjust for the population, because remember, in figure one, what I'm showing you is total number of deaths. But what you don't realize is that you, as you move left to right, the denominator, the population is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There are fewer and fewer people in each bucket as you go to the right. So to correct for that, we would ask the question, which is how many of these deaths per 100,000 people occur in each group? And if you look at that figure, I think the story is readily apparent, which is that by the time you're 75, the risk of death from a fall is enormous. Now, it's not as high as Alzheimer's disease, it's not as high as cancer, and it's not as high as heart disease, but it comes in pretty much just after that. So this is what sets the stage, because on the one hand, I think you can look at these data and say, wow, this is really problematic. But the other point is you can't wait until you're in that bucket to decide you're going to do something about it. If you look at a group of people who are 65 years old or older who fracture their hip falling, 25% of those people will be dead in six months. Regardless of how you slice and dice these data, a hip fracture is a devastating outcome. This has a greater mortality than smoking. So I think where we're going to go next is starting to look at what people can do to improve their bone health.